Hey folks, Kevin here. Well, it's October 23rd, 2018. I'm out in the first food forest. Over my right shoulder is the honey hut. Over here to the left hand, uh, over my, my left shoulder, the right side of your screen, is one of our Santa Rosa plum trees. Uh, the, the last couple of years I've, I've covered uh, black rot, which is a fungal disease that really affects uh, mostly our plum trees, but the black rot gets on our grapevines, gets on nectarine trees as well another fungal we have brown rot as well and uh, but the black rot has been the major source of problem and I think it all began when I picked up one of these Santa Rosa uh, plums from a Home Depot and uh, I think that there's uh, different uh, cultivars of the Santa Rosa uh, plums and this is the one, once this, this plum tree came in here, uh, it, it, it really did very well initially. It, it got a really nice form, uh, but the, the very first season I could see that there was some black rot on it. And the next season I started seeing it on some of my other uh, plum trees as well. And, um, and so it's been an issue here on, on the property. So today what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and cut this tree up, pull it out, and replace it with one of the other trees, whether I'm going to bring in one of the peach, I think probably a peach tree right here. I might bring in one of the mulberries or a pawpaw. I've got different trees planted in different locations. I think I've got one peach left down in the old Hu culture uh, mounds. Uh, de down south, south of the um, of the solar panels, and uh, and I'll go down there after pulling this one out and see if I can bring that one up and transplant it here. Uh, the only reason that that peach is still there, I've got, I think I've got one peach and one plum down there. Uh, the only reason that they're still there is because they they were they uh, were the subject of deer rub, and and I wasn't sure that they'd make it. Um, but several of them have done pretty well. The ones that I've gone ahead and transplanted up up here that have had the deer rub, they've really healed up pretty darn well and have been doing pretty good. But today what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, saw off the limbs on this, bring it down into a location where it's far enough away from um, from where all of the, the, the food forests are. And it's a place that I'll be uh, bur uh, burying. Uh, it'll go into a who culture system alongside of a fence line uh, over a stone wall. So that's what I'm gonna do right now and see how that goes. <laughs>
Well, I'm back. Things went pretty well today. Uh, the tree right there, I've, we've got it in ground. This ended up being, uh, I selected the uh, Blushing Star Dwarf Peach. This one again had severe deer rub. You could see where it was uh, trimmed off in a couple of places and I, you may have seen on the trunk just how severely uh, the trunk was damaged previously, but as you can see the the trees making a comeback Hopefully uh, this transplanting in the fall won't set it back too much and it'll do well. I uh, Dug it out of an area that was a hugel culture one of the hugel culture growing beds that I created down and back in which was going to be one of the third food forest areas I subsequently changed my plans on that, but you may have noticed as I was digging down with bumblebee how rich and thick and black uh, or dark brown the soil looks, so like it's mostly compost, and that's lots of woody material that's decomposed. And I'll make a future video, it won't be this year, about dissecting each one of those who culture systems that I created back in 2012 and uh, see just how well the different wood species broke down if there are some there is there tape from some of the cardboard uh that, you know that i put into the systems there and is there evidence of some of the uh, magazines lots of tons of journals and all our, our medical journals veterinary journals that we uh, had acquired for so many years with the glossy paper and all and that's all in those systems and uh and i'll be uh, excavating that area up in the future but once I, I got the, uh, the root ball dug up, uh, there was one root I ended up having to trim off. But otherwise, uh, the, uh, the soil stayed fairly well on the upper part of the root of the root ball for this tree, which made transplant, uh, transporting it a little bit easier. Went really slow uh, with bumblebee coming up to this area. Amended the air, the site with compost. Fortunately, this is not a super rocky spot right here. It's sandy right in this spot, and uh, and then uh, put the the soil back on top of it, and then added more compost on top of that, and then the wood chip uh, mulch on the surface of that. So, I think this will probably work out pretty well. Uh, glad we did have some rain last night after uh, putting the tree in. We got about a half an inch of rain. So that's great. That really is going to help this tree out as well. I've got lots of pruning to do here in this uh, first and both first and second food forest. There's, there's lots and lots of pruning to do. But I've got some other uh, projects that I've got to do as well. We're supposed to get some rain today and I've got to get some of those modified tomato cages started as well. So if you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. If you think this video was of value, please give us a thumbs up. Uh, we really appreciate that. Uh, and if you haven't uh, hit that bell icon yet, if you want to be notified when we post more videos, hit that bell icon. And by all means, folks, have a super fantastic day. Bye-bye now.